OpenAI just announced Sora. Sora is the next generation of text to video models with fidelity and capabilities we have never seen before. It's just mind blowing and crazy. In this video, I'm going to show you what Sora is, how I think it works and what it's capable of. Sora is a text to video model, meaning you can input a text prompt and it will generate a high fidelity video of up to one minute of length in any resolution ranging from 1920 to 1080 to 1080 to 1920 and everything in between. OpenAI describes Sora as a general purpose simulator of the physical world and indeed calling Sora just another text video model doesn't do it justice. It is easily the biggest leap in generative AI since the advent of GPT. Sora isn't limited to text prompts, but can also be prompted with still images. For example, a dully generated image of a Shiba Inu dog wearing a beret and a black turtleneck can be transformed into a video just like this. Or consider an image of a realistic cloud spelling out Sora, which Sora turns into a perfectly loopable animation with ease. And the craziest part is, Sora has a remarkable understanding of the content and context of these images and somehow creates a possible story around these images and uses that to turn them into a video. So this image is described as in an ornate historical hall, a massive tidal wave peaks and begins to crash. Two surfers seizing the moment, skillfully navigating the face of the wave is turned into a cinematic masterpiece as if it is the easiest thing of the world. Sora is able to extend videos forward and backward in time. In Photoshop, you can extend an image and let it generate the new part of the image using AI. And I'm sure you have seen that at least a hundred times. But Sora does that in time. You can input a video and prompt it to extend it by an amount of seconds into the future or into the past. Consider this, three distinct videos, each starting differently but leading to the same originally generated video of a cable car in San Francisco, all converging to the same final frame. Sora is also able to generate seamless transitions between two videos. Given this video of a butterfly underwater and another video of a drone flying over the Colosseum in Rome, Sora can create a video where the drone morphs into the butterfly, then suddenly shifts the surroundings from the Colosseum in Rome to the underworld where the original butterfly was flying. This might look like just a fancy way to change one video into another, like something you might do with After Effects. But check this out. You have a video of a drone flying and another video of a city of gingerbread during Christmas. Sora can put these together in a remarkable way. Now we see the drone flying. But as it gets close towards the building, suddenly behind it, there's the gingerbread city. Crazy. The angles and how everything is framed in the generated video changed completely. Because an image is essentially a video with just one frame, Sora can also generate images and it does this up to a resolution of 2048 by 2048. But why is this a big deal? Especially when we already have DALI and other stable diffusion models. Since Sora is trained on video data, it has a better understanding of how objects interact in a 3D space. This allows it to create images with a deeper sense of how things relate to each other in the real world. OpenAI mentions some emerging capabilities of Sora. These are abilities the model has even though it was not specifically trained for them. For instance, Sora is very good at understanding the 3D space of the world we live in. 
It can create movies featuring both moving and static objects captured by a dynamically moving camera and still all the objects move realistically and are positioned perfectly. Another capability OpenAI has shown with Sora is its long-range coherence and object permanence. So a common issue with other video generation models using recurrent neural networks or GANs was that objects could disappear or change when blocked by another object. This no longer seems to be a problem with Sora. This object permanence also enables Sora to capture the same object from multiple angles while maintaining the object's consistent appearance throughout. This deep understanding Sora has of the real world translates into its ability to simulate realistic interactions such as painting on a canvas or biting a big chunk out of a hamburger. OpenAI suggests that Sora can develop a profound internal comprehension of the world around us and render this with high fidelity. I, I think we have seen this by now. This capability extends beyond the real world to virtual worlds like Minecraft. Sora understands the limitation of Minecraft's physics. Simulating a player moving around and interacting with the virtual world just like in Minecraft. Before we dive into how I understand how Sora was trained and how it works, just one more thought. All of this video generation is very impressive, no doubt. But being a transformer model, this means that Sora does not have to generate videos. Considering this, it seems entirely feasible to use a model like Sora to process real-world inputs from a camera stream, extrapolate movement and interactions and then generate outputs of any kind, such as outputs that could be used for other purposes like controlling autonomous robots. I don't know, is that scary or somewhat cool? So in my opinion, this model generating videos is indeed much more than just a new creative toy. OpenAI released a research article a few hours ago describing a little bit more how they trained Sora and how it works. Let's dive into it and see what might be happening. Disclaimer, OpenAI hasn't released Sora to the general public or published a scientific paper yet, so take this information with a grain of salt. Sora combines the power of a transformer model with stable diffusion models. They actually call it a diffusion transformer, which makes a lot of sense. Transformer models like what's behind GPT-4 revolutionized how we approach natural language processing. If you're curious about transformers, check out my detailed video linked here somewhere and in the description below. The first step we need to take when working with a transformer model is to encode the data into a form the transformer can work with. For natural language processing, we do the following. We take the input sentence and map the words onto tokens. Tokens are numbers representing a word or a part of a word. Because there are a lot of words, these numbers get very big and big numbers are not easy to train on. So the next step is to encode them into vectors. This step is called encoding. And because words follow a specific order to make sense, we also add something called positional encoding. So the order of words does not get lost in the process. For Sora, OpenAI found a way to use this idea and transfer it to video. They take the raw video data and represent it as a series of still images. These images are then dissected into patches. These patches are the equivalent of one token, encapsulating one group of pixels in multiple frames. These patches are then encoded to turn them into vectors and compress them. OpenAI talks about compressing these patches into a lower dimensional latent space, which sounds like the encoder understands how to represent similar patches with similar vectors, enabling the model to get an understanding of what the meaning of each patch is. Like words in a sentence, patches have a position and a time in the video. So to turn these patches into a stream of data, a spatial and temporal encoding is added to them. 
This is the equivalent of the positional encoding in a natural language encoding for a transformer. Now that we have an idea how we can encode videos into a stream of patches on which a transformer can work and which have a spatial and temporal and semantic meaning encoded, how can we train a model to generate these space-time latent patches? My guess is that OpenAI prepared a dataset consisting of a lot of videos and images. A lot. And for each image or video, they had a description of what is happening in the video or the image. They actually mention using DALI 3's recaptioning capability to generate descriptions for images and using GPT to enhance them. So I think that's how they generated the dataset. Adding a transformer after the encoder, which transforms the space-time latent patches into a description and training it with this dataset might be a way to train the encoder to understand how to encode the patches semantically. You can then simply detach the encoder from the transformer and have a semantic video encoder model. Another piece we need is a decoder. So a model that takes the space-time latent patches and generates a full resolution video out of them. To train this, you could use the space-time latent patches as the input and the original full resolution video as the training target. We can encode videos and decode videos now. But how can we generate new videos given a specific prompt? This is where the stable diffusion model comes in. Stable diffusion is the process of turning random noise into an image described by some input prompt by iteratively removing more and more noise from the image while still respecting the prompt. So step by step, the noise gets turned into the desired image. Going into how stable diffusion works and how it is trained goes way beyond the scope of this video, but if you want to know more about it, please comment, yes please, down below. So when Sora is asked to generate a video or image, a stream of latent space-time patches with the desired resolution and length is generated to start with. They are all filled with noise. Sora uses stable diffusion now to generate clean space-time patches from these, which encode the video we want described by the given text prompt, or video, or text, or image, or all of it? I don't know. Because stable diffusion is an iterative process, the longer it runs, the better the result will be. Here we see a video of a puppy in the snow playing with a woman in a red coat. This is the end result after 16 iterations. After just one iteration, it looked like this. After four iterations, it looks like this. And after 16 iterations, we finally get this. But how do we get from the clean space-time patches to the full resolution video? Easy. We simply feed it into the decoder. That's what we trained it for. The decoder takes the clean space-time patches and voila, we have our finished video. I really look forward to reading the paper and seeing how close I was to the actual process of how Sora works and was trained. Maybe I'm totally wrong though. Either way, if you want to learn more about Transformers, I see you in this video. Have a lot of fun, coders.